All right, gonna show you the pagan origins of this heresy known as baptismal regeneration, basically salvation by baptism. In other words, you don't get washed in the tub, you get washed in the blood. It's a pagan heresy. Not only is it unscriptural, it comes from Babylonian religion. It comes from also Hinduism as well. But first, gonna turn to the word of God because that is our foremost authority, the word of God for all matters of faith and practice. A good proof text against infant baptism which is, of course, part of baptismal regeneration, but also just against baptismal regeneration in general, is Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. It says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which were baptized. Oh, no, it doesn't say that. The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Interesting. Verse 45, And they of the circumcision, which are Jews, uh, which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 46, For they heard them speak with tongues to magnify God, and they answered Peter, Can any man forbid water, that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Verse 48, And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed with them to tarry certain days. And of course, you have here the Holy Ghost falling on people before before they get baptized, or, they don't, or I'll put it this way, they don't get baptized, but the Holy Ghost will fill on them. But how does that work if baptism saves you? Because if you receive, if you receive the Holy Ghost at baptism, because when you get saved, you receive the Holy Ghost, what do you do with this? Because the Holy Ghost is, is falling upon them before baptism. And of course, a good proof text against infant baptism is Acts chapter 8, beginning at verse 35 says and then philip opened his mouth and began began at the same scripture and preached unto him talking to the eunuch uh jesus verse 36 and as they went on their way they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said see here is water what doth hinder me to be baptized so there's something stopping him from being baptized well let's see what it is verse 37 and philip said if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest uh, and he's answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Verse 38. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And he went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Okay. And, and, and notice this. Uh, verse 39. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So what do you have here? This is a good proof text against infant baptism, because... If babies have to get baptized, what do you do with this? Because what doth hinder me to be, to be baptized? There's something stopping him from being baptized. What is it? He has to believe first. He has to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, babies are not capable of believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So how do you baptize them? It's not a valid baptism. But now I'm going to show you the pagan origins of, because I've already refuted it from scripture, this, this heresy of baptismal regeneration. Now I'm going to show you the pagan origins of it. Okay, so it says, this is uh, the two Babylons by Alexander Hislop, and of course, pagan Roman Catholics and pagan heretics who want to say that, oh, baptism is part of your salvation, they'll say, oh, the book's been debunked. No, it hasn't. Okay, the book is very much a good source against uh, the pagan cult that is Roman Catholicism. That's where my voice is starting to give out. It's uh, pretty late at night right now. Uh, I'll start here. Uh, this is page 115 on the PDF copy. The scriptural account, oops. The scriptural account of baptism is not that it sorry is not that it communicates the new birth, but that it is the appointed means of signifying and sealing that new birth which already exists. Okay, you can see Romans chapter six verse four talks about how how you're buried with Christ, you're dead with Him, and you rose again. Baptism is a symbolic uh, event symbolizing you being dead with Christ and rising again. Again, you can see Romans six four on that it's symbolic. In this respect, baptism stands on the very same grounds as circumcision. Now, uh, what says God's word on the efficiency of circumcision? That is, speaking of Abraham, quote, He received the sign of, of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had, yet being uncircumcised, Romans 4.11, Circumcision was not intended to make Abraham righteous. He was righteous already before he was circumcised, but it was intended to declare him righteous and to give him the more abundant evidence of his own consciousness of him, 
contradict the conscience of him being so. Had Abraham not been righteous before his circumcision, his circumcision could not have been a seal and could not have given him confirmation to that which did not exist. Interesting. So just like baptism, circumcision was obviously a symbolic thing. So with baptism, it is, quote, the seal of the righteousness of the faith, unquote, which the man, quote, has before he is baptized, for it is said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, Rome, uh, Mark 16, 16. Where faith exists, if it is genuine, it is the evidence of a new heart, of a regenerated nature, and that is only on a profession of the faith, and regenerated in the case of an adult, that he is admitted to baptism, even in the case of infants, which who can make, make no profession of faith or holiness, again, like we see in Acts chapter 8, verses 35 to 39, the eunuch is saying, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And he's saying you have to believe. Philip tells him you have to believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, again, babies are not capable of doing that. So you can't baptize them because they're not capable, they're not mentally capable of believing that. Faith or holiness, the administration of baptism is not for the purpose of regenerating them or making them holy, but of declaring them holy in the sense of being uh, fit for being, sorry, of being fit for being consecrated, even in infancy, to the service of Christ. Just as the whole nation of Israel, in consequence of their, in, as, in consequence of their relation to Abraham according to the flesh, were quote holy unto the Lord, if they were not uh, in that figurative sense quote holy, they would not be fit subjects for the baptism, which is the seal of a holy state. Scroll down. But the Bible pronounces them in consequence of their descendant of from believing parents to be, quote, holy, in that even where, even where only one of the parents is a believer, quote, the unbelieving hus husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else where your children are unclean, but now are they holy, 1 Corinthians 7.14. See, that's another thing, too. They back up their doctrine from scripture, not from pagan traditions, not from pa papal bulls, from antichrist, devil-possessed popes, not from the pagan occult church councils and all this other stuff. The word of God alone. Because, again, Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged two -edged sword, and a discerner of th the thoughts and tents of the heart. And, uh, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 and 21 talks about how the, how the word of God is a more sure word of prophecy. And 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 16 and 17 show the word of God, the scriptures are complete for faith and practice, that it, it will make you thoroughly, thoroughly furnish unto all good works, and that the man of God is perfect from the scriptures, and all scriptures given by inspiration to God. Uh, it, is in, it is in consequence that, in consequence of, and solemnly, solemnly to declare, declare that holiness, quote holiness, uh, with all the responsibilities attaching to it, that they are baptized. That, quote, holiness, however, is different from the holiness of the new nature, and although the very fact of baptism, if scripturally, let me scroll down, if scripturally viewed and uh, duly improved, is, the hand, is in the hand of the good spirit of God, an important means of making that holiness a glorious reality in the highest sense of the term, yet it is not in all cases, necess necess necessarily secure their spiritual regeneration. God may or may not, as He sees fit, give the new heart before or or at after before or at or after baptism. But manifest it is that thousands who have scroll down further been duly baptized are still unregenerate and are still in precisely the same position as Simon Mangus, who after being uh, canonically baptized by Philip was declared to be. In the in the gall of bitterness in the bond of iniquity acts 723 and then go into the doctrine of rome because baptism of regeneration is a roman catholic heresy the doctrine of rome however is that all who are canonically baptized however ignorant however immoral uh, only if they, if they only give implicit faith to the church which is obviously the church of the antichrist will be in the future uh, faith of the church and surrender their con their consciousness to their priest are as much regenerated as ever as they can be, and that children coming from the waters of baptism are entirely purged from the, quote, stain of original sin. Sorry, my fingers wrong. Uh, hence, we find that the Jesuit missionaries of India, boasting of making uh, converts by thousands by the mere fact of baptizing them without the least previous instruction or the most 
in the most complete ignorance of the truths of Christianity, which of course Roman Catholicism is not Christianity, it's a pagan cult, it comes from, from a Greco-Roman paganism, on their mere profession of submission to Rome, which is going to be the Antichrist kingdom in the future, the doctrine of baptism or regeneration is, is also is essentially Babylonian. Exactly, it comes from Babylon. It also comes from Hinduism as well, because in Hinduism, they have this sacred river they go to where you wash yourself in that river, you have your sins washed away. So they also believe in a sort of uh, water washing away your sins. Uh, some may perhaps stumble stumble at the idea of regeneration and all having been known to in the pagan world, which we're going to see it was clothed in the pagan world. But if they uh, only go to India, they will find at this day the bigoted Hindus, like I spell it there, who have never opened their ears to Christian instruction, as familiar with the term and the idea as ourselves, so are familiar with the term and idea as ourselves. So they're familiar, the Hindus are familiar with the term of basically having your sins washed away with uh, being baptized, with water essentially. So the Catholics and the pagan heretics, like the Campbellites, the Charismatics, who teach baptism or regeneration, they're borrowing it from Hinduism, they're borrowing it from Babylon religion and other pagan religions too. Uh, the, the, uh, sorry, the Brahmins make it their distinguishing boast that they are quote, twice born men, <laughs> like being born again. You know, like in John chapter three, verses three to five. Wonder where they got that. Wonder where they got that concept from. A uh, twice born men, and that such they are sure of eternal happiness. Uh, which is funny, because Hinduism does teach uh, salvation by works. It's kind of funny. Uh, now the same case, same was the case in Babylon, where the new birth was confirmed by baptism. Confirmed by baptism. Sorry, in a uh, Chaldean mysteries. Hope I'm saying that right. Before any instruction could be received, it was required first of all that the person be initiated to submit, initiated submit, to be initiated submit to baptism, in a token of blind and implicit obedience. We find different ancient authors bearing direct memory both the fact of this baptism and the intention of it. So different ancient pagan religions t taught a form of, of baptism being you know initiated into their religion or having your sins washed away. Interesting. Quote, in certain cases, in certain rites of the heathen, says Tertullian, uh, especially referring to the worship of Isis and uh, Mithra, quote, the mode of initiation by baptism, unquote, the term, quote, initiation, unquote, clearly shows that it was to the mysteries of these divinities he referred. Um, this baptism was by immersion and seems to have been rather rough and formidable, a rough and formidable process, for we find that he who passed through the terrifying Pass through, sorry, the purifying waters and other nece uh, necessary uh, penances. Quote: If he survived, he was then admitted to the knowledge of the mysteries. And go down there. Um, to face this ordeal required little, required no little courage on the part of those who were initiated. Uh, and then it goes down there. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says our own pagan ancestors, the worshippers of Odin. Uh, Germanic Norse paganism, the, the god Odin, are known to have practiced baptismal rites, which, taken in connection with their avowed object in practicing them, show that origi originally, at least, they, they must have believed that the natural gift and corruption of their newborn children could be washed away by sprinkling them with water or by plunging them as soon as born in lakes and rivers. So they also believe the Norse pagans, the Germanic pagans, also believed in having your sins washed away uh, through baptism. Yet on the other side of the Atlantic in Mexico, the same doctrine of baptismal regeneration uh, was found in full vigor among the natives when Cortez and his warriors, sorry, scroll down, Cortez and his warriors landed on their shores. A ceremony of Mexican baptism was beheld with, with astonishment by the Spanish Roman Catholic missionaries in thus strikingly described in Prescott's Conquest in Mexico, quote, when everything necessary for baptism had been made ready, all the relations of the child were assembled and, uh, and the midwife who was a person that performed and, and the midwife, who was a person that performed the rite of baptism, was summoned. At early dawn, they met together in the courtyard of the house. When the sun had risen, the midwife, taking the child in her arms, uh, called for uh, a little earthen vessel of water. And while those about her placed the ornaments, which had been prepared for baptism, in the midst of the court, let me scroll down a bit further, uh, to, perform, to perform the rites of baptism, she placed herself with the face 
uh, towards the west and immediately began to go through certain ceremonies. After this, she sprinkled water on the head of the infant, saying, O my child, take and receive this water of the Lord of the world, which is our life, which is given for the increasing and renewing of our body. It is to wash and purify, I pray. O these heavenly drops may enter into your body and swell there. Scroll down. Uh, that they may destroy and remove from you all the evil and sin which was given you before the beginning of the world since all of us are under its power she then washed the body of the child with water and spoke in this manner uh when so whence soever thou comest thou that art hurtful to this child leave him and depart from him uh, for he now liveth anew and is quote born anew like being born again John chapter 3, verses 3 to 5. Again, I wonder where they got that. I wonder where they got that concept from. Born anew, he is purified and cleansed afresh in our mother Chala Chala Chiviti Klu, the goddess of water, uh, bringeth bringeth him into the world. Uh, having thus prayed, the midwife took the child and both hands lifting him towards the heaven, said and said, O quote, O Lord, thou seest here. Thy creature whom thou hast sent into the world in this place of sorrow, suffering, and, and penitence. Penitence, interesting. Grant grant him, uh, O Lord, thy gifts and inspiration, for thou art the great God, and with thee is the great goddess. Unquote. So in other words, the uh, Germanic pagans, the Babylonian pagans, uh, and, Egypt, and the Mexican pagans were all doing a form of having your sins washed away through baptism. So in other words, baptism baptismal regeneration the baptism baptism itself is a scriptural concept but this shows that baptismal regeneration is not only unscriptural as we showed in acts 10 and acts 8 it's also completely pagan it's a pagan heresy it comes from paganism it's roman catholic which the roman catholics just like the trinity uh pagan occult trinity uh comes from paganism the baptism regeneration heresy that the catholics have they also borrowed from pagan religions I want to show you guys that. So anyone defending baptismal regeneration is defending a pagan heresy. Uh, it is Roman Catholicism, and just like the Trinity, just like the whole you know Mary goddess thing, it comes from uh, occultism. Essentially, it comes from paganism. It comes from false religion. So don't be deceived by any heretics who teach baptismal regeneration. Just know they're teaching a pagan doctrine. They're teaching a pagan practice. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.